Hi, in this video, I would like to show probably the most interesting feature added to Blender since I published the course, and that's a sky texture. So when we launch the rendering, you can see the default illumination applied. So I'm gonna switch to the shader editor, and here you can see we can choose the world settings. I'm gonna press Shift A, choose the texture, and select sky texture. So what it does, it tries to very accurately simulate the light source in our 3D scene. When I rotate it, you can see the sky look is now more realistic and the illumination is coming somewhere from this side and it doesn't need to include any extra light source such as sun lamp. So the basic thing I can do is changing the sun elevation. Let's choose 30 degrees. I'm going to switch back to the camera. I can see it's very bright. So we can decrease the sun intensity and then change the sun rotation to see the shadows. So now I'm going to talk about the settings we have here. I'm going to start from the end. So the ozone and dust, um, in general, they affect the sky look we have in the viewport and in the final rendering. So if we increase the ozone, you can see the sky becomes brighter and there is more of this blue tint visible in the sky. And if we increase the dust, the bottom part of the image will be let's kind of clipped. But it also has uh, effect on the illumination itself. Maybe not visible with this bright uh, daylight illumination scenario. However, you can see it changing here, but it will be much more visible if we decrease the sun elevation. So let's use the degree of five and let's rotate the sun a little bit. So we have more light. Let's maybe use something like this. So we can now see the sky is very blue. And if I decrease this value, it becomes a little bit, a little bit less saturated. Um, but the way I like to set up the sky texture is starting with the air slider. So what the air slider does, it kind of uh, decides how thick is the air. So for example, if you want to create a very nice, let's say winter uh, sunset or sunrise scenario, the air since it's cold during this kind of uh, situation, the air will be very thick. And you can see if the sun goes down like that, we can move it even further down. The illumination will have this very nice uh, reddish tint. We have to increase the sun intensity so it's more visible here. And you can see we have this very, very nice looking uh, sunlight you would expect at this hour. But let's let's use a little bit different value here. Let's maybe decrease the air thickness to four. And here I can still play around with the ozone, for example. So I like to add a little bit more of it for those morning um, kind of situations. Maybe four even. And yeah you can create this very interesting and I, I really like it. I mean, the amount of control you have over the settings and the, the quality of what you're getting is really um, very good, even if we compare cycles to, to other rendering engines. So I'm super happy we have this available now in Blender. The remaining settings are just the sun um, size. So you can see if I increase it, we can get the sun area bigger at the horizon and the altitude. So normally you would use this setting only if you want to create, for example, uh, a skyscraper view from the top floor or a rendering, uh, let's say, of an airplane going through the sky. So then you increase the altitude to have your camera positioned uh, much higher than on the ground level. So we can just use the default value of zero if we are doing regular renderings. 
In this video, I'm going to show you a trick that I'm using that allows me to adjust and fine tune the sky texture color even more. So I'm going to press shift A within the node editor and choose the separate RGB node. Then again, converter and combine RGB. So I'm going to connect the dots here, reds to reds, greens to greens, blues to blues. And what it does, it allows me to fine tune each of those color channels individually from the texture color input. What I'm normally using is just the RGB curves. So let's plug them everywhere here. I'm going to press control spacebar just to have a better preview. And now what I'm able to do is, for example, if I like to have a little bit more or less of the blue color within my illumination, I'm just able to do it here with this curve. So let's refresh the viewport and let's see what happens if I increase or decrease the amount of blue color. So you can see now the illumination looks way different, but it's mostly visible on the sky. So if I go down, you can see the sky becomes a little bit green here on top. And I go up, it becomes more blue. And we can do exactly the same for the other channels. So let's manipulate the green channel right now. If I increase it, get this kind of effect. When I reduce the red channel, we get something like this. So now I'm overdoing uh, those adjustments on purpose. But if you're looking for a very specific color tint to achieve here, um, this is the way to go with this, uh, with this texture, with the sky texture. Because when you're using HDRI images, for example, you might get a very specific lightning conditions, which won't be possible to achieve just with this note. But by fine tuning those color channels using the curves, you're now able to achieve almost everything that you want. Uh, you can also change the sky look only and keep the illumination as it was to do this. All you have to do is just add one more background node, connect the pure sky texture here, then add a mix shader node. And as an input for the fact, just use the, it's light path, yeah. And use the camera input here. So what we have right now will be, uh, let's just double check what's where. Yeah, so we have to change the notes here. Is that correct? Yes. So now we are using just the pure sky texture as the illumination in our scene. And we, we are using this note setup as the camera input. So whatever is set up here will be visible to the camera only. So we can, for example, do those crazy adjustments like this, but still keep the light kind of uh, within the neutral range. So it looks more realistic. So it's not like super red or we can go crazy. Maybe add something like, like that. And again, we don't get this a violet tint into our illumination. So I get, I, I hope that's a, a handy trick for you. I'm using this quite often when I'm setting up my renderings. For example, in a scene like this, I would like to uh, fine tune the sky color only to something like we have exactly right now. Um, then I'm able to do it using this simple note setup. The, the sample scene is also included in this chapter, so you can download it and play around. Another great feature we can use with the sky texture is animating the sun. So I've already prepared the very basic setup, like the sunrise, like this. All you have to do is press the I key 
here within the settings, which will add the keyframe. So I'm going to start with the sun elevation and sun rotation. Then I can go to the end frame and change those values. So let's say we will increase the sun elevation to 30 degrees. I'm going to press the I key again and the sun rotation to minus 10. And I'm going to press I key again. So you can see the sun intensity is very high right now. I'm going to go down to 0.1. Yeah, I'm kind of happy. It's just a test. So I'm going to press the I key again. Move back to the first frame by pressing the shift and left arrow. And I'm going to increase the sun intensity here to 1 or even maybe to 2. Yeah, I'm going to press I again. So when I move the timeline right now, you can see we get this very nice sun motion. We can also animate all those settings. So at the first frame, I'm going to keep them as they are. I'm going to press the I key. Now I'm going to move to the last frame by pressing shift and right arrow. And I'm going to, well, change the air to default one, dust to one and ozone to two. And I'm going to press the I key again. So now you can see when I move the timeline, we are able to get a very interesting effect of the sun moving around the scene. You can also use those settings if you would like to try different illumination setup very quickly. So you can just click through the keyframes and see how the illumination looks like. One more thing, if you would like to actually animate it, I suggest going to the graph editor. And if you select the sky texture node, you will see all the motion displayed as graphs. You can see here we have the very smooth start and smooth ending. And what I like doing is pressing the V key and changing all those points to vector. So now the entire motion is linear, which means the animation of the sun won't accelerate at the beginning and it won't slow down at the end. So this is what I also suggest doing with the camera motion usually. Yeah, so I really hope you like it. And as I said, the sky texture is really, really great addition to Blender, which helps to create very cool interior renderings. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofort store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.